In this video, we're going to be looking at three types of budget outcomes. The underlying cash outcome, the headline outcome, just like inflation headline and underlying, and the fiscal outcome. So the first one is the headline and cash outcome. Headline, the catchphrase. Yep. Headline cash outcome is the total cash received by the federal government less the total cash paid. So any money they receive minus any money they pay in a given year is the cash outcome. It includes all cash flows regardless of whether they directly impact the economy. So I'll give you some examples of things that will get excluded from this figure when we're looking at the underlying cash outcome. Underlying cash outcome, you can work out the cash phrase. Excludes not one-off cash flows that are included in the headline cash outcome that do not directly impact the economy. So if there are certain things that the government will collect money from or pay that don't directly affect the economy or don't really show the strength of the economy at that particular point in time. So we want to remove those because they don't really give us a good indication of what's going on with the economy at this point in time. Or they don't really give us an indication of the budgetary policy stance or what the, policy, the budget will do to the economy in the short term. So here are some things that would get excluded in the underlying rate. So future fund earnings is the first one. The government has all these um, shares and things like that that they will return, get interest and dividends on. So the government's got funds set up for like building, for our future, all these different things that they collect interest on because they've got money in the bank basically. Or they collect dividends because they've got different shares. Those things would get excluded from the underlying rate. So if the headline rate was 20, and let's say that included future fund earnings of $3 billion, that would get excluded and the surplus would become 17 instead of 20. The underlying rate also excludes net cash flows from their investments. So it includes any money that they're getting from the future fund. It also excludes cash flows that they might get from selling a government business enterprise. So if the government was to say sell Australia Post and collect $50 billion from that, that would get excluded because it's a one-off payment. It's not really a sign of the strength of the economy and they're only really going to get it for one given year. And the problem with that, even though they'll collect a lot of revenue now, in the future they're, not, they're going to not collect the revenue that that company made because it will have privatised it and therefore they're not going to get the revenue anymore. Any purchases of shares by the government, so if the government purchases shares that will cost the government money, these two things will increase the headline rate, this thing will decrease the headline rate, um, and therefore, but is also excluded in the underlying outcome. And I'll show you how that works in a sec. And receipts of the payment of debt to the state governments. Any relationship with the state government where they're paying each other would get excluded as well. So here's an, an, under, sorry, an underlying cash surplus is, is basically the money available to the government to purchase assets or pay off debts. Um, successive surpluses were used by the Australian government up until 2008-2009 to basically get rid of all our debt. So we got con consistent budget surpluses and took our debt down to zero. And then we have that helped us to accumulate savings to be used in the future for investment and economic downturn. Now we don't have any money for the future for the economic downturn to spend at all. Why are these one-off transactions excluded? Well, basically, one, they don't directly impact on economic activity. They often are just one-off transactions or that represent the transfer of ownership, so the government selling off assets or buying assets. So it's not really a sign of the strength of the economy and it's not money that will be available for general expenditure. Um, a lot of the money in the future fund is designed for the future so we can't spend it to stimulate the economy right now. So here's an example. Receipts 120 billion, outlays 20 billion, 100 billion. So the headline cash surplus would be $20 billion. But 3 billion of that is future fund earnings. So that won't get included in the underlying, so we're down to 17 billion. Another 5 billion is the proceeds from selling a government business enterprise. That's not included in underlying, so we're down to 12 billion. Okay, these two things have been deducted because they're not part of the underlying balance. Government investment in shares. So the government's also invested in shares. So do we take it down to 8 billion? No, we don't, because this is actually expenditure by the government. So that expenditure is actually deducted from the underlying rate, or not included. So that, that expenditure of $4 billion in shares has caused the headline rate to fall, which basically means that you know the headline rate would now be back to... Um, so the headline rate of $20 billion means that included this $3 billion, okay, it included this $5 billion, and it deducted that $4 billion. So to work out the underlying rate, 
we would now do the opposite. We deduct this $3 billion because it doesn't, we don't include that, so we're down to $17 billion. Then we deduct this $5 billion because we're not including that, and we're down to $12 billion. But because this amount has been deducted from the headline rate, we've actually got to add it again to show that we're not accounting for that. So the underlying surplus would actually, actually be $16 billion. So what I mean by that is that basically any money that the government is earning, we now deduct because it's not getting included, and any payments by the government are now getting added. So here's another example. Receipts 150, outlays 120. The headline cash surplus was $30 billion. And then it says net cash flows from IFAPP. That's basically their net cash flows from their investments. Their net cash flows for their investments was $10 billion in positive. So it was $30 billion in total, but that $30 billion included $10 billion in cash flows from their investments, so that needs to get deducted. It also includes $5 billion from future fund earnings, which again is not available for current consumption, so that gets deducted as well. And the underlying cash surplus becomes $15 billion. The last thing in this video is what we call the fiscal outcome. So the cash, the underlying cash outcome is still recording cash transactions. The fiscal outcome is recording all revenues and expenses. Now the difference between the two, and this will probably make more sense to accounting students, but the difference between revenues and cash is, for example, let's say that you know we ran, let's say we built infrastructure or something like that. So we built a road in one given year, but we're not paying for it until the next year. Well, if we don't pay for it till next year, it won't get included in the underlying outcome, cash outcome, until next year. But because the infrastructure was done in this period, it should be for this period, so we include it in the fiscal outcome, but not the cash outcome. It hasn't been paid for in cash, but it was an expense for this period, so it's within the fiscal outcome. So what the government can actually do, if they want to make their underlying cash outcome look good, they can delay their expenditure to the next year, and therefore it goes on that budget and doesn't affect this year's budget. So the fiscal outcome is just all revenue earned minus expenses incurred in a given year. It also includes all the things that were part of the um, the part of the headline cash outcome, so net capital investments, future fund earnings, any asset sales would be included. Um, you could argue it would be more accurate if we used a fiscal outcome that didn't include those, but the fiscal outcome would include those. Thanks for listening.